It's hard to wrap your mind around what the environment is and what it means for collections because the collections live in the environment every day of the year. They experience the winter, the summer, the spring, and the fall every year, year in and year out. It's typically not what happens in the immediate term, in this hour or this day, or even this week or even this month that matters. The sort of simple, I think too easy, way of making sense of environmental data is to look at the graph and say, is the line flat? Or is, is there some uh, perturbation going on here? And perturbations are supposed to be bad. They aren't necessarily bad. We can easily be fooled by spikes and dips in temperature and humidity. You really need to have a knowledge of what's the nature of your collection and what are the behaviors of, of the objects in the collection as far as uh, adjusting to or equilibrating to, we say, those changes. Usually it's the case that short-term events are not important. They're not felt by the objects. And I don't mean to suggest that short-term events are always uh, unimportant, but the science lately has been pointing to the fact that it's the longer-term averages, it's the prolonged events, especially seasonal differences, that really matter in the, in the health of collections. Risk multiplies in the extremes of uh, environmental conditions. Extreme dryness um, greatly multiplies the risk of physical damage. Extreme dampness does as well. Extreme dampness greatly multiplies the risk of mold damage. And from the natural aging or chemical change point of view, temperature is the major driver. In periods of time when temperature is high, that are prolonged and occupy a significant fraction of the year. These are the events that matter. The way we've gone in this whole environmental management research that we've pursued over the last 15 years is to be able to quantify each one of these modes of decay as they are influenced and driven by the environment. If we have measurements over time of temperature and humidity values, which we get from our data logger, that we can then do uh, an analysis that gives us an overall estimate of how the environment is affecting the rate of deterioration. And it's the rate of deterioration that we manage. This idea of not interpreting the environment by subjective examination of a temperature and humidity graph, but using standardized computer computations, algorithms, uh, is a very powerful one. And the algorithms that IPI uses, IPI calls its preservation metrics. And these are a way to boil the whole complex set of possible interactions between collections and environment down to a few numbers that are very easy to manage. Uh, it takes a little bit of experience to know the names of these metrics, to know what they're doing, and what they can tell you and what they can't. But after you've made that investment, uh, you find that it's a very, very handy way to get a sense of a space. And uh, you, you use these metrics to assess risks. Once you learn to learn a few rules of uh, how to analyze uh, environments based on the metrics, it goes very quickly. Rather than look at that curve of humidities going up and down, you look at only a few numbers, and those numbers give you a clue as to whether the conditions might be harmful or not. We can quantify risk. And this has led a number of institutions to have success in arguing for facilities upgrades, in arguing for uh, improvements. Everyone who, who's in a position to affect improvements needs to know more than just the data, because the data doesn't really speak for itself. The data needs to be rendered into information, information that can be understood this is unacceptable, this is okay, this is very, very good, and you need some quantitative metrics to get to that point.